Hello, and welcome to the Learn to Code podcast here at One Month. My name is Chris Kostig, and today I'll be chatting with Matan Griffel about how to learn Python. So if you don't know, Python is one of the most popular languages. It's used for web development and data analytics. The language is used by Google, Instagram, Uber, and so many more companies. And the cool thing is that Matan, who's on the show today, he teaches Python to MBAs. So Python has become the most popular coding language at business schools. And specifically, Matan teaches at Columbia Business School. So in this episode, we will be chatting about, well, how did Matan learn Python? Because his story is really interesting. He was not a computer science major. He taught himself. So how do you go about if you want to teach yourself Python? What are some of the best resources you can use and what should you avoid? Also, we'll talk about what a great project, like a great first project is for learning Python. Because sometimes if you have a few projects that you can really sink your teeth into and be proud of, it'll give you the momentum and motivation to keep making stuff. Oftentimes I see programmers or uh, new programmers, right? Um, just get really frustrated starting something and thinking, oh, I can't do this and giving up. So we want to talk about small wins if you're getting started learning so that you can keep up that motivation. So without any further ado, let's jump into this episode with me and Tom Griffel here at One Month. This is my chat about how to learn Python. Hey, what's going on, Matan? So happy to have you here. Hi, Chris. Good to be here. Today, we are talking about how to learn Python, and there's really no better person to ask than you. <laughs> because There's probably a better person. <laughs> um, yeah, you've been teaching at a faculty at Columbia Business School. You teach Python to the MBAs there, yep. and you also teach the one-month Python course at one month. Yep. So I'm excited to just first ask, how did you learn Python? <laughs> oh, learning Python specifically. Um, actually, it's interesting. I didn't start coding with Python, I started by learning something called Ruby on Rails, which is, um, it's, it's, it's basically Ruby, which is like an alternative to Python. Um, and I loved it. And I started with that because I wanted to build uh, like a, a website, like a product, basically. And one of my friends who, you know, I knew how to code, so I assume he knew everything. So he pointed me in that direction, and so I was like, "Okay, I'll I'll do whatever you say. I like learn that." So take me here. So you didn't know how to code at all, but yeah. he did. So he seemed like a magician. Yes, okay. exactly. <laughs> and he was like, not only did he know how to code, but he he wasn't like someone who studied computer science in school and was like a coder. He was someone like me who was like just bored one summer and like picked up a book and taught himself how to code. What did you study in, in school? What did I study? I studied uh, finance and philosophy. Okay, not okay. coding. Not coding, okay. right. I did my undergrad in two different things, totally unrelated. Okay, okay. <laughs> but yet you made it here to teaching uh, coding to uh, As, That's right. Business school. It's kind yeah. of surprising to me. Um, Do they but, know that? No, anyway, that's another no they question. totally <laughs> know that. They totally know that. Um, how Because I, I bring it up, and, and honestly, I think it's um, it's what part of what makes me like a good teacher to mm. people is that I don't like when you're when sometimes an expert who's been doing something for 10 or 20 years they uh, they internalize all of these concepts meaning they get so like used to it and so familiar with all these little things that they learn along the way they forget that it's something that most people don't know so you know when they try to explain it they sneak in all of these confusing concepts like if if you've ever heard someone who's technical who's like knows how to code talk about coding and try to explain it to you and like you're confused within the first 10 or 15 seconds it's because they like you know they did their best trying to explain something that you know in their mind is pretty complicated but they they like didn't really take the time to think about what you know and what you don't know and so they might have like dropped another five words that you don't understand and then you're like wait a second like i thought that I was going to learn that one thing, but now you've thrown five new things at me, and now I need to ask all f what all five things are, but I'm not convinced that you're going to be able to explain those in a way where it's not going to be another 10 things I have to learn. And that's like when people usually <laughs> give up because they're like, oh, this must be way more complicated than I think. And all the while you're thinking, wow, but this person is an expert in this. Yeah. Like they know something I don't know. I must be dumb. Yeah, and it's I actually think it's the opposite. I think if someone is not able to explain something complicated in, in a way that anyone could understand, then they're actually not an expert in it. Oh, I like that. They are mm. kind of just like living in their own 
you know, ecosystem, sort of like using the same buzzwords that they hear everyone else say, a lot of times that kind of masks over a lack of understanding. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, so in the situation with you learning how to code, you yeah. are, I like this kind of tool that we're learning first off. You went and asked somebody smarter than you, ostensibly, because yeah. you saw somebody doing something. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, how did you, how do I do this? Or how did you do this? How did, what, was the, what was that like? It, it was actually more, I didn't really start out thinking I was going to learn how to code. I started out thinking, like, I want to build, I have this idea and I want to build it. And so I went to my friend who I know had already, you know, built a company on his own. And I was like, help me build this. Oh. And he was like, wait, wait, wait. You know, like if, you, if you're if you trying to build this, if you're trying to find someone who can like build it for you or like the magic, you know, solution to your problem, it doesn't exist. Like, but fortunately for you, you can learn how to, how to code and build it yourself. And I was, I think at first I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I don't have a degree in computer science. Yeah. Like I'm not going to take all this time to learn it. And he was like, no, 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 trust me. It's easier than you think. He, and then he told me his story. And it was basically, you know, he was he was, he was working at a summer, uh, at a parking garage one summer. And he just was bored out of his mind, like, you know, waiting, basically, you know, pulling cars in and out. And he had an idea, so just like I did. And a friend recommended to him, like, a book. And so he read the book and he built this thing. And actually, in three months, he was like, oh, shit. Like, I, like, learned how to code. Like a coding book he learned from. Yeah, exactly. Fortunately, he didn't recommend a book to me because I like, you know, I'm like allergic to books. At least at the time, like I've I've sort of come around, uh, especially into coding books. But uh, it's it's because it's become more interesting to me, kind of intrinsically. But when I first started out, like the only reason why I was actually able to like pick it up and follow along is because I was watching videos, like mm. videos of people. You know, going through it and kind of walking me through like it on YouTube or something. I was I started with Linda. Oh, okay. Yeah, I started with Alan Linda, yeah. and it was like a it was like a basically a week long class. Okay. It was like a set of fifteen videos or something like that. Um, and it was pretty good, and I but I still felt like after going through it, I was like, I did what they said, but I still have no idea, you know, how to go off on my own and do something. Was that was that better than nothing or was that okay or did that make you feel worse or how, how did that land for you? Um, it was definitely better than nothing. Like, you know, I got through it and that was my initial goal was to just not give up okay. along the way. Um, so I got through it and I, but I was still kind of confused. Like I, I, I think when you're learning something, I mean, this is this process you follow, right? Like you're a kid, you, you copy people, you do what they do and you don't understand why you're doing it. But like maybe you start to figure out that oh you do this thing and you get this result right you know how like kids like will like pretend to to like clean up around the house with like a vacuum cleaner or like pick up the phone and like call people and they're not talking to anyone but they're just like going through the steps they don't understand the world they don't understand what they're doing but like you do that enough and eventually you start to realize like oh when i do this this thing happens like i get it now but i think that sometimes just the doing it part has to come first yeah instead of trying to understand everything I'm thinking about like a mental map um, of like how things are ordered. I mean, it's sort of like a physical map of like geographically when you're trying to get somewhere, but for coding, because yeah. when you show up like that story, you meet one person and you ask them and it just seems so complicated and there's yeah. like all these ways to start. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you just don't have this map in your head of, of where it is. That's how it lands for me. Right. And I mean, there's the, there's like the conceptual understanding, like, you know, we all strive to really get why things work and why they happen a certain way. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then also there's like the the phys physical, like the body level understanding of like going through an action and like knowing how to do it. So mm. I think of like tennis, right? Like you have to understand the physics of tennis to be a good tennis player, but you also just have to know how like a good swing feels, right? You have to have done it thousands of times so that, you know, even though you could understand it and like plot it out, you don't even have to think about it. Like your body just does it right. And coding is kind of similar where like I could tell you all the concepts of like, this is a variable, this is you know, how you do this. But if you just watched me code and I explained it to you, you'd be like, oh, I get it. But like until you've actually just done it a bunch of times, until you've like created a variable a hundred times or until you've you know had to do a hundred loops, you don't really get it. Because there's always mm -hmm. little things that you're kind of figuring out, some things that kind of surprise you, you know? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, 
I wonder why if I do it this way, the answer is different than if I do it this other way. Or like maybe the 10th time you do it, a question pops up and you're like, mm. why is it this? Or like, uh, you know, what happens if I do this? Mm. And that's really like when a lot of learning happens. Um, and just being able to like, you know, to a certain extent, do it without thinking. I think it can happen quickly, but you just have to understand that like it combines all of these different, you know, approaches to learning. You know, like yeah. there's there's no way to shortcut it. You can go intense and learn it quickly by just sort of like memorizing, doing a lot of things. And that's honestly, that's what I did. I went through that first Linda class and then I was like, I don't really get it, but I'm going to do another intro <laughs> to coding class. And then I went through, you know, like this online book called the Rails tutorial. And then I was like, I think I'm starting to get it, but I'm going to do another intro class. And then I did like the Stanford's, you know, yeah. intro to programming online on iTunes U class. Okay. And by that point, I was like, okay, I think I get it. <laughs> uh, this is fascinating. You, it sounds like you, you just mentioned three resources that you used. Yeah. And did you, like, how did you? You just kind of did one after another, like, and it was the same topic, or was it different? To was it all just Ruby on Rails, or was it, was, it different? It, it was all Ruby on Rails um, because that's what my friend John had the, been like. Here's what you should learn, um, and so I didn't want to like go off in all sorts of different directions because I felt like if I if I try to learn three different languages, then like I'm not really learning sense. any one of them all that, that makes well. Sense. Yeah. Um, and I don't I don't necessarily think they were one after the other. I think I did the first one and I kind of took like a pause of a few weeks and then I was like, okay, I've kind of lost everything. <laughs> Let me learn okay, another yeah. one yeah. to refresh myself. And it came back like pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and then I think I did the third one like pretty close after that. But like you you know, it was like about a month's worth of stuff. Not like every day, nine to five or anything, but like you know maybe half an hour or an hour a day or you know a little more or a little less than that depending on what was going on how long would you say it took you to learn to code yeah so this is a funny question um because i think it like what it means to know how to code is actually such a broad thing like you know so uh you get a computer science degree you study for four years do you know how to code you know, probably. I think most people would say that a computer science major knows how to code. But like, if you ask them, you know, build me a website, they might not actually know how to do that, right? Because maybe they never learned how to how to set up, you know, some a website on the web, how to buy a domain name, how to do all these things. Um, could they figure it out? Probably. You know, are they going to figure it out on their own, or maybe they can ask a friend who has done it before? Like, these are all different kind of solutions to problems, like technical problems. And the fact that they could figure it out in a reasonable amount of time, like, I think that's what we think of as knowing how to code, mm -hmm. right? Knowing how to solve like a technical problem using code or using like technical solutions within a reasonable amount of time, right? Now, take my students, um, you know, who take the, the one month Python class or like who graduated from Columbia Business School, like most of them finishing the class would say um, that I'm not a coder. Like I don't know how to code. I've just had experience like reading and writing some code. I've gotten to solve some challenges, but I don't feel comfortable enough calling myself a coder. Mm. And, you know, and I'm not going to like apply for programming jobs and whatever that, you know, that's maybe reasonable maybe you don't want to do that but you know then i would ask them well like well let's say i gave you a challenge like a problem you didn't know how to solve right and you had like an unlimited amount of time do you think you could eventually figure out how to do it and there's and their answer would probably be like yeah I'd, you know i'd probably you know ask someone or i'd like google it and go through all the different resources and figure it out and i'm like well if you can do that then there's nothing really separating you from a coder Right, the coder can do it. You can do it. It's just a matter of how long it takes you <laughs> to do it. Right. So maybe if I said, okay, your goal is to build a website, and you have a you have a year to get like a, a website live. Like you could figure it out if that's all the time in the world. And maybe a coder can do it in like a week, right? Or you know, you're really good a day. But even within professional coders, there's such a big range. There's some who can do solve pretty complex tasks very quickly, depending on you know what they're good at. There's some where it could still take them a while. So it's, it's just a matter of like shortening the amount of time that it takes you to solve a problem, right? So the real, the real answer to that question, I think, and you know the question is like, how long does it take someone to learn how to code, is really like, when do you feel comfortable with coding? Like, when do you feel like you 
feel good calling yourself a coder. Like, you know, you don't feel like you're lying to people or or you feel like when you solve a problem, like you actually understand why the solution's working as opposed to you just tried something and it worked. When was that for you? <laughs> uh, I'd say around six months. Okay. And, I, and I think that point is going to change for people depending on what they're doing and how they're using it for their job. Um, for me, it was definitely like, you know, I... I learned how to code. Well, I did the I did the guides. I started teaching coding uh, classes. Wouldn't even necessarily call myself like a good coder at that point, or say I knew how to code. This is a general assembly. Yeah, general mm-hmm. assembly and like the Skillshare class. And then I built. Uh, then I built the website. Right, it was one month rails dot com, and it was there where we started like doing these. Uh, PDF like certificate of completions for people and then I built like a login page so they can log in and access lessons and then I I added a stripe for credit card processing so like people could put in their credit card sign up and like take the class and it was then where I finally was like I was like oh shit like this is serious now <laughs> I'm a coder no like not only not quite am I coder but I was like uh, if things if things fail, it's my fault. Oh, because there's nobody else. Yeah, it's, it's like there's, it was just me. So if, like if someone's credit card info or whatever, like Stripe doesn't really work that way. Like you can't. You you know, maybe you know or weren't sure. Yeah, I would, but it was sort of like I I could process their payment. Like I could lose stuff. I could mess it up. They're paying me money. Like I it should be working. And it was it was that pressure to like uh, to like you know owning a project of my own. That was what eventually led me to being like, oh yeah, I can do this. But it was more of like building the confidence of tr- of get, putting myself in this kind of scary situation, to be honest, where I didn't feel like I was suited for it, and then proving that I could do it. And that's when I would, I would say like, yeah, okay, I, I think I can call myself a coder now. Great. If somebody listening wants to learn Python, they want to learn to code, they want to learn Python. What would be your advice for a small win or a project? Because it sounds like what, what I'm hearing is that you're saying you had specific things you were trying to build and you also in that process used a variety of different resources, you know, trying to build this this site that you were making. So what would be, was that too much to bite off? Is there a smaller chunk that somebody could say, hey, I did this and like I'm on my way to learning to code or learning Python? Yeah, I think I think actually that's the hardest part when you're getting started is you don't know like the relative difficulty of a project that you have in mind. Like you might have an idea for like a really cool app you want to build or a website you want to build. And then but you don't know if like is that you you know really hard task, is it a really easy task, how long is it going to take me? Um, cuz my advice used to be like pick a project and like work on it and then I'd have people come to me with projects and I'd be like that's a really that sounds really hard. Yeah. Like that could take, you know, a team of 5 people years to build right and and it's like i think it's great that people are inspired and have creativity and want to do something um, but my usual advice there is like uh come up with like a, a kind of think through the problem come up with a plan of attack uh slim down the idea like in the realm of lean startups and minimum viable products like figure out what is the mvp the minimum viable product of the thing you want to build and like tackle that tiny little piece of it um at least because you know, it's it'll you, it's something you can hopefully chip off in a short amount of time. Um, how do you know what like the minimum viable product is? Um, it's hard to know that until you first start learning, and so I think the process actually kind of feeds into itself. Like what I would say is, it's okay to go into it with like an idea in mind, or if some cool idea pops up as you're going through mm-hmm. it, like keep that in mind. Um, but you know, when you finish a, a, a class or a tutorial or something um you know keep track of these things of like oh maybe i can use this to do something else similar to what you're doing and push your boundaries a little bit in in like in different directions but where it's you're still kind of doing what they're doing so like my example is this um when i was first learning i read the ruby on rails tutorial which basically has you build like twitter using ruby on rails Right, so you're copying something that you already know about. I didn't go and then say, okay, now I'm going to try to build the Uber app because it's like a totally very different thing. I started by being like, okay, well, Twitter, you know, if if I take out tweets and replace it with like videos, it's basically like a, you know, like I could put classes there. 
So I was sort of pushing the bounds of what you, I knew. You're, you're telling like picture the Twitter and the way Twitter, yeah. the interface of Twitter works. You have like tweets of text and you yeah. were saying, what if instead of text, it was another an image or a video. Yeah. This is what you're saying. And it's like a spread of, or not like a feed of, yeah. it's kind of the image. I'm yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So like as I was going, I was coming up with these ideas and, but thinking, okay, I think like I think I know how to do 90% of what I want to do based on what I've learned. And there's like the 10% that I still have to figure out. Um, and so that's, you know, that's kind of biting off something that you can, that, you know, you can chew as opposed to trying to do something where you have no idea how to even get started. Mm. Um, and, you know, sometimes, and also just not being, um, you know, too like precious about the idea, like giving it a shot. If the, if that extra 10% you don't know how to do, if you try it and it's just like beats you down, be like, okay, let me try something different. Right. Mm. Like don't be married to the idea. Cause Honestly, it could turn out to be really easy. It could turn out to be really hard. You don't really know. Maybe talk to a friend or somebody yeah. to get some advice. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's always a good uh, way to figure out the relative difficulty of something yeah. is um, talk to other technical people. And you hopefully, as you learn, you have the opportunity to get exposure to people who know more than you. And you think about how do you build your network. And learning is a great way to do that because people do really like want to help out. I mean, every coder has relied on other people when they didn't know before and they're really grateful for those people and so they want to pass it they want to pay it forward and they're you know all you have to do is like be genuine and sincere and like you know don't annoy them right but just like you know make a connection um and they'll then they'll want to help you and then yeah you, i mean you can them. meet those people i'm thinking at meetups yeah. or even if you don't you know i put a place post on your facebook and you could say hey do i know anybody even if you don't know anybody there's plenty of people online yeah. uh, reddit forums and hacker news and places where i yeah, have stack overflow maybe even there's a bunch of sites out there where people yeah. are um yeah or yeah i love that idea. totally that exactly great. yeah meetups were great for me when i was first getting yeah. started Good to know. So, like, meetup.org, that's where you go to do that. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, I, you know, there's, like, the the Python, like, hacker hours meetup, and there's just, like, tons going on. And even, even if you don't live in a city where there are meetups, there are, like, these online communities, too, where people are willing to help. Mm. What about getting started learning Python? There's a lot of languages you could start with. You mentioned you started with Ruby. Yeah. If we look at Ruby versus Python or Python versus HTML or JavaScript, where is there one that's better to start with? or one that's better to learn, or should you learn all of them? What do you think about this? I mean, on, on one hand, my answer is like, don't worry too much about it, because um, I started with Ruby, and then I learned Python, and it was pretty easy for me to learn Python. Like, it took literally, you know, two months for me to figure it out, because w w part of learning coding is like, you're learning the building blocks of how computers work. You're learning about, like, what a variable is, and how do you do a loop? And even though the exact ways that you do them look are a little different in each language, like you're learning how to do that in Python versus in Ruby, um, the real the real thing that you're learning is like just the building blocks. And then when you know it in one language, you're just like, okay, well, okay, here's how you do this in the other language. Um, so you know that's why it's it's not that big of a concern to be like, oh shit, what if I learned the wrong one? Um, but I will say. Like in terms of uh, demand, like Python is really good because it's 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 kind of the data science and data analysis like programming language of choice, um, and that's because you know most of the major data science like tools or plugins these these things that other people have have created and put out there into the world to make it easier for you to do stuff like statistics or analyze large data sets or graph it. They're, they've been built in Python, and there's like a, a longer, complicated reason for that. It's actually kind of interesting. Like when Google first started out, they wrote their their scraper, the thing that went across the web and like figured out what the internet looked like. They used Python for Google what? Used Python. Yeah, Larry, Larry, and Sergey wrote it in Python. And if you look at their white paper from like the early '90s, they show the Python code that they used. I have no idea where they stumbled on Python. It was like a young language, and like you know, who knows how they figured that out. But they used Python, and then when Google started to become like a popular startup and started to grow, they hired the guy who invented Python to work at Google. And then they, they had the whole concept of 20% time, and were like, you can spend 20% of your time just working on anything you want to, right? You can give, you can keep working on Python, you can build tools for like data science, whatever you want. They told him that. Yeah, well, okay. and everyone that joined their company, the reason they hired him was because they wanted 
all the smartest people who wanted to learn Python to work at Google. So it was like their inflow of the smartest developers from all these like computer science programs. It was like a really smart Google business. Google is so decision. smart all the time. And and so you know as that sort of builds in the same way that you hit critical mass, like in you know, L.A. Uh, you know starts being this tiny little entertainment hub because the weather's good and they don't have to cancel shoots or whatever. And then people move there, and then at a certain point, it's kind of the place you have to be if you want to work in entertainment. Mm-hmm. And it's the same for like coding and data science like you want to be at google because because he's there yeah and you want to work and you want to do data analysis you use python because you know the all the biggest machine learning uh like functions are built using python natural language processing like for analyzing text and getting the sentiment like is it positive or negative that's built in python and you know so um that's one of the reasons i think python is a really good place to go is because it Right now, there happens to be a lot of work in data and data analysis. It's also something that's actually relatively easy for a beginner to get into um, because it's you don't necessarily have to work in a big team of you know tens or hundreds of people. You can be on your own with Python, like analyzing data, right? And that's it is more of like a solo kind of thing generally. Um, so it's a good place to start, and it and it's part of the reason why it's become like one of the most fast growing languages and one of the most in-demand languages. Um, so it's a good place to start. Um, I also just have my own personal like allegiance to Ruby on Rails. If you want to build websites, I think that's a great option, especially like, you know, any any kind of website where you've got members that sign up, like users, and they can do things on the website. Uh, I don't th- think Python is like necessarily the best option for that. Um, but it's really just a question of like, you know, maybe there's slight advantages here or there for some languages to some things, some applications. Um, but on the whole, I think Python's like a great starting point, to be honest. For somebody listening who wants to learn Python, what are maybe two or three free Python resources out there that they can look at where they can start to see if this is something that's interesting to them? Uh, free resources. I mean, there's a lot of Python resources. The one I typically send people to is called Learn Python the Hard Way. Um, it's not free, though. It's like $29. So it's relatively cheap. It's free online. I've seen this before, right? There you go. It, yeah, you like I think online. so. I, yeah, because... It's been a while since I did it. Yeah, it is. It, at least the first few chapters. Yeah, right. Because um, I've sent people there to check it out. So yeah. Learn Python the Hard learn Way. Learn Python the Hard Way. It sounds difficult. It's not really that difficult. It, it just means, like, do it, like step-by-step step and like, you know, really dive into it. Um, and he's just a great teacher at Zedshaw. Um, there is, there's Automate the Boring Stuff with Python, which is a book, and I believe there's like an online website as well. Um, and that's fun because it's less about like the basics of Python and it's more about the cool stuff you can do with Python. Like how do you can use it to automate, you know, the pretty tedious things that you might be working on in your job. Um, and then there's the data science uh, handbook for written for Python and it's a book but it's totally available online for free also um, so so usually if like you really want to learn about data science that's like a good third uh, step to go and then there's all these online resources um, I don't know various little like does code Academy still have free uh, Python? Like I, lessons, I think, but you know, sometimes when I go and send people there, there's like a pop up now, and they want your email, and then they like, I think they have like a pro version. It's a little bit, yeah, it's a little, confusing. it's a little confusing. I don't know. How, how do you find that that that's? Um, I f- I find that those are good, not as a way to learn, but as a way to kind of like practice while you're learning. Like, it's like there's drills, drills, right? exactly. Yeah. Right. It's it, not like yeah. a course. So no, much. exactly. Yeah. Drills. I like there's a uh, hacker rank is a site with really good, just like practice drills. Um, and exorcism is another one, but, okay. but, um, yeah, in terms of learning, I feel like automate the boring stuff with Python and, uh, learn Python the hard way is cool. like two good starting points. All right. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me, Chris. This was a blast. Talk yeah. to you soon. All right, I want to thank Matan for coming on the show. If you enjoyed this chat with Matan, you can learn more about his Python course at One Month. That's onemonth.com. There's a bunch of free resources there for getting started, getting Python installed, choosing between Python 2 and 3, and he also teaches a 30-day bootcamp with support and a bunch of awesome stuff. You can check that out. It's all at onemonth.com. 
Did you like this podcast? If so, we have many more free episodes coming up in the future. Please subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, whatever it is, whatever your whatever your flavor is. Tell a friend, that would be helpful. And if you really liked it, it would be awesome if you could leave a review. We'd love to get some people shouting out some good reviews so that we could share this show with more people. And that's, the, that's really the idea. Well, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next week.